Here comes the key. Here comes JT. We're demolition. Anyway, welcome to North South Connection. Cronoso, JT and Keithy Boy back out here as we usually do. I don't know. Every other, every other one of these things I help you out. The other ones you do on your own, I guess, pretty much at this point that we're doing. Yeah, when I don't want to bore you to death with a 15 minute long uh, Tito Santana versus King Haku match, I, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, so we were tasked uh, with a very special video based uh, task tonight, Keith. So, task yes. with a task from the taskmaster himself, Mr. Little Ryan Gray. Mm -hmm. He uh, came to us, and this is similar to what Aaron George and I did a year ago for Survivor Series 1987. He said, do you want to do a tier ranker of all the teams in the big tag team match at Survivor Series? So we said, yes. sure, why not? Uh, so mm -hmm. if you are listening to this, Cronoso, this section is on video. If you want to pop over, because you can see the tier list on screen. We're going to share it now. And uh, Keith, you and I, before we went on, decided that we were going to do this uh, all-time rankings. So we're going to rank these teams, uh, DODF careers only, mm -hmm. DODF career only. And we're going to do that uh, all-time. So not based on, like for Aaron and I for 87, we like rank them within that time frame. Yep. But I think for you and I, we're going to do all-time rankings. Their whole mm -hmm. rankings, how they are. Um, all right, so we have uh, five tiers with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine, ten teams. Mm. So do you want to do two in each? Or do you feel like we should do a one, go, one greatest? No, I think we should do, well, no, because I think, ooh, that's a good question. No, I want to do two each. All right. And we and can rank reasons, two within the top. Why. We'll, we'll, we'll still have why. a number one team. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I think we can say the Bolsheviks are the worst <laughs> of this group. <laughs> Even considering that the conquistadors were usually two job guys, I would still say the Bolsheviks are the worst. <laughs> so who, let's, let's go by this, right? Who's got the more memorable moment? We have the conquistadors are here at this show. It's probably the oh, most yeah. memorable moment. Absolutely. Or the Bolsheviks' most memorable moment is Steve Allen and then getting killed in the uh, by the Heart Foundation of WrestleMania Six. That so doesn't those are, happen. Those are the two. That doesn't happen for two more years, though. So I would say, oh yeah, wait, we're yeah, doing but this all is all time. time. We're doing yeah, all time. All time. Uh, no, it's it's definitely. I think the most memorable moments of the Bolsheviks are, aside from WrestleMania Six, it has to do with when they're separated. So uh, yeah. no, I think I agree. The Bolsheviks are probably the 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 worst of all time. All right, so we'll go Conquistadors over the Bolsheviks. Down yeah, because the Conquistadors. Plus, the Conquistadors also had. Appearances later on in the Attitude Era when Edge and Christian just up as the uh, Conquistadors. And right. so, you know, it's always a chance. You never know what's going to happen with those crazy Conquistadors. Okay. So I think Young Stallions are clearly next here. Yes. Even though they're good, good, good little team. But uh, I mean, when you look at this, this team, this match is loaded with stud teams. It is. Um, I think, I think the only problem with the, with, yeah, they're just, they were two job guys that are, were put together, but they're a better. That's really funny that we have. Four job guys over two name guys, mm -hmm. one of which is a former world tag team champion. <laughs> no, <laughs> but anyway, it is what it is. I mean, the Bush were just a rough team, like they were, yeah, you know, not the best workers. Nikolai's pretty no. washed by that point. Boris was never anything special. I could, I could see putting them over the conquistadors just based yeah. on WrestleMania six, but I'm fine either way. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna have a controversial right. one right here. Well, I was saying, I think this is our next toughest part here so i would say and i'm, I'm not wondering me. where you're going all right so powers of pain obviously most would say here i know you're not are you gonna do that nope not are you thinking all. of the rougeos no no oh brain no busters way. huh brain nope. busters nope keep well, going if you want the huh? rockers no it's not the rockers the fucking bulldogs i hate the british bulldogs i am sorry Ooh. i know it, it's a very controversial pick and people might get mad at me. I I would rank all of these teams above the friggin' British Bulldogs, in my opinion. I can't. I can't have the Rougeos or the Powers of Pain above the Bulldogs. I am willing to put the Rougeos down here with the Stallions because they are fun. They get the All American Boys stuff, but they don't really have any memorable matches or angles. They get the little thing with Jimmy Hart and the Hart Foundation. Um, but nothing else really. Like what No, and they seem like they feuded with the, the bushwhackers, bushwhackers the entire time. So they do right, have a uh, Luke Rubin Jock's balls at WrestleMania five. <laughs> I'll put <laughs> I would put them I would put them there then. I will let you put them there. Yeah, I think the powers of pain have they they'd be the ones I'd compete with. I know you're a big mark of the powers of pain, but I would I would I would have them 
as the other potential here, but I think you at least get the demolition feud, the Fuji turn at yeah. this show. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they have the great match with a team on this list, the Rockers and MSG in early yeah. 90. Um, but I think I would, I would have them and the Bulldogs in the next tier. So they had um, a WrestleMania world title match, world tag title match, you know, the Rujos yeah. never did. And you know, there you go. So, all right. Well, all right. So I think our next three in some order are the Bulldogs, the Brain Busters, and the Powers of Pain. Yeah. So we need two in this B tier of those three. I would say, in my opinion, I think it's probably it's probably the Powers of Pain are the next one up. And then probably I would pro mm, I would put the Bulldogs in here. Because I think that, and I'll tell you why, and I think it's because overall, the Brain Busters had banger matches with a lot of these other teams, and they looked great against, like, every match they had against the Rockers was awesome when they actually had matches against the Rockers. Their matches against Demolition were great. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, let's look at their, let's let's look at their runs quick. So, yeah. The Bulldogs ostensibly debut in like mid eight, or early eighty five, right? Because they're not mm-hmm. at WrestleMania one, so it's right mm-hmm. after that, and mm-hmm. they, they're pretty much like pushed right into. Yeah, they win the tag belts almost immediately. A feud with the Dream Team, right? So they, mm-hmm. let's say they come in mid eighty five because they're at the Wrestling Classic, so we'll call it summer of eighty five. Mm-hmm. Um, and for all intents and purposes, they're done here, right? So that's about three, about three, a little over three years they're in there. Uh, part of that dynamite's hurt. They have a great match at WrestleMania 2 with the Dream Team, the Nightmare at the, at the Rosemont. Yep. Um, then they have some good stuff with the Hearts. They get the match with the Rougeos at SummerSlam, which is fine. Uh, the Islanders stuff, you know, pretty good. So they have a lot of memorable feuds. So this is... So I would say they have, I think, the more memorable run. But the Brain Busters have um, the matches and the angle, right? So they have... This match here is pretty much where they first show up. They have a good run in the Rumble that kind of involves the mega powers of the Rumble. A uh, super memorable match at Mania with Strike Force, right? More for Strike Force than them, but they're awesome in dissecting Tito throughout the match. Yep. They win the tag titles over Demolition on Sunday's main event, which is a big deal mm-hmm. uh, in, a, in a big moment. They have the classic with the Hearts at SummerSlam, mm-hmm. lose it back to Demolition. Mm-hmm. And then you get on at Survivor Series until he gets fired. So they only have a year, but they jam pack a lot of it. But I think the Bulldogs are the more iconic WF team. God, they are. I, I just I hate them so much. Um, all right, I'll put my personal bias aside because even though when when uh, Dynamite gets hurt, he's never the same after that. No, and that kind of kills their momentum of doing anything. Uh, but I will agree with you that their their length is outruns the There's brain. Three and a half years, and they're doing yeah. stuff the whole time for the most mm-hmm. part. Like the Dream Team feud is really good. You get the whole Hot yeah. Foundation feud, the yeah. Islanders stuff. So it's like yeah. those are all pretty memorable. No, no, you're right. I'm just I know you're right. It's a, it's a personal bias against them. I just every time I hear like the, the lists of the world's greatest tag teams of people yeah, freaking yeah. Blow, they blow the bulldogs and i'm like they're not that good of a team but okay whatever i'd have yeah. to look back we did our gwe tag list like six years ago now yeah I, I don't think i had them super high i mean i had them high-ish but not not like where some would have had them right to your point like top five or something sure. um but that said i think if you're talking individual peak years the brain busters may be number one on this list like when you say yeah we could have ranked it that way too right which of these teams had the best single year run it's probably them and demolition probably because demolition yeah. we'll talk about but they're 89 to 90 is like amazing too so right i, I think i think you could you could have one, one two for me yeah if one you're a, saying like who had the best you know? one year arc yeah of all these teams but that's yeah. that, that's not what we're doing right we're doing all-time resume for the WWE. Yep. so but i would have bulldogs next right right above the rainbow yeah. bulldogs okay. are next um i think after that is you have the rockers well and... hang on let's wow talk. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, like, I, I want to talk Heart Foundation versus Rockers. Yeah. Okay. I right. think we can talk Demolition. All right. Let's talk Heart Foundation versus Rockers. So, mm-hmm. Rockers never have the tag title run. Nope. But to me, I think they're the better team as a team. Um, but let's think best matches, right? So, 
on the big stage, they have the Twin Towers at five. Which is, I fucking love that match. It's a great match. They yeah. have the SummerSlam Six Man, which they're a big part of. That's a great match, too. They got um, WrestleMania Six Socks with the Orient Express. But they got SummerSlam with Power and Glory, which is super fun, even though it's them just getting their shit kicked in. It's kind of like the Brain Busters match. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got the Rumble 91 with the Orient Express. WrestleMania Seven is great with Haku and Barbarian. Yep. And they have an all-time breakup to end the team. Um, yeah. They also have the match on Raw in 2005. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Uh, when the, when Marty comes back and during the I'm trying to think. Do they have? Do they wrestle? Do they wrestle in a match in uh, at the Rumble in '90 as well? No, they're in the Rumble, and Sean they're gets they both get kind of thrown out right okay. away. They don't have much of a showing. Okay. Um, they also have a really good Signings Made Event match too, in yeah. uh, in '90 with. I think it's with the hearts, right? And when demolition, oh no, yeah, and demolition no, interferes. With demolition. Both. Well, they have one with them too. They they have yeah. both. They have two in ninety both. So, yeah. right. so they have a great and the powers of pain match I mentioned earlier is great. Yeah. Um, at, at MSG and they're pretty good in the Survivor Series too. Mm-hmm. Like the ones that they're in, they're pretty good. Yeah. Like even even like the Survivor Series ninety where they lose to the like Sean looks awesome in that match. Yeah, yeah, but like they're all good right. in that. They're good at eighty nine. You know, so that's their run. run. Okay. So yeah. I, I think they have a lot of high quality stuff. They do. Yes. The hearts is heels to me are a little shaky in, in the match quality area in big match settings. Now they have some really good house show stuff with the Bulldogs, really good science made event match with the Bulldogs. Mm-hmm. There are some three matches like, okay, but it's really mm-hmm. focused around Danny Davis. Yeah. Uh, that's really the first big pay-per-view match. Sorry, series 87. They lose like in the match yep. as champions. Yep. Um, they split in 88. Yeah. Split, yeah, yeah, right. They split for most of 88. SummerSlam, yeah. they have that okay match of demolition. Yeah. Um, and then Rumble 89, they get that six man with Duggan, which is like okay. WrestleMania 5, okay, with rhythm and blues. Yep. Um, they are saddled with rhythm and blues like almost their entire yeah. title run in 90. So SummerSlam 89 is a classic with the Brain Busters. That's probably yeah. the best. Yeah. 90 with demolition. Yep. And that's it. I mean, WrestleMania with the Nasties is fine. Like, yeah. I think the Rockers, like, if we're looking at legacy and resume, yeah, you're like, not, you're not they're wrong. Champions are good. You're team, not wrong. I if I if I said you had to pick a match right now, Rockers or Heart Foundation, which match are you watching? Which team are you watching? I, you know what? I've had more joy watching Rockers matches. Uh, because I think, like you've mentioned, their match against the Towers, their match against the Faces of Fear, like they're they have Orient like, Express, yeah, like yeah, that Orient Express at the Rumble is like was like almost could have been match of the year, you know. So listen, what what's their number one match? Would you say that's their number one match? Yeah, that's their number one match. I would. And think. the Hearts' number one match is what the Brainbusters, probably. So they're probably both about four and a half. But you know what the funny thing is is that that match that they had where the title change happened that's actually a really good match. The, the, if you, the one where they beat the hearts it's a really oh yeah where the rope hearts. breaks and all that yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's, a, it's actually a really good match like it's a pretty decent match so um i think that's where i kind of get a little on the confused side because it's like they're both good but all right well let's talk demolition because maybe they're our top two so demolition no way. yeah demolition uh is, is lacking i think in great matches right i would say that the most what probably the most like known team from the era Ungodly pops at WrestleMania five. Ungodly pop at WrestleMania six. Yep. The Brain Busters matches are really good. The Fuji stuff. They fall apart quick off the cliff. They have a, a very short run, really, all intents and purposes. Again, it's really just three years, and not even like they come in in right after WrestleMania three. Yeah. But they really don't get going until at the end of eighty seven, and they're gone by the end of ninety. Yeah. So they really only have three years. Um, I, most but, iconic theme song of everyone here. Maybe outside of the, quality, the quality of their like their their television matches are it, it as far as just like a brute team. I think they're they're really they're there. Like they just had that charisma that I think knocks them into the upper echelon. You well, know? there's only one team to me of these three where you can say they were on par with. I'm going to name a couple guys because they were in a match with them in Survivor Series. Hulk Hogan. Oh, Jake yeah. the Snake. Jake. Yeah. As and far as like being over. Yeah, absolutely. 
The Poppets from eighty nine to ninety. Besides Hogan and Warrior, they're probably the most over act, right? The Poppet Six is the greatest pop for a yeah. tag team ever, I think. And five isn't far behind when they beat yeah. the Powers of Pain, and four yeah. is heels when yeah. they beat Strike Force. Yeah, where they oh. where they're the heels going up against the white meat baby faces, and the crowds going nuts for them. Yes. So, so if I we're think... talking pure workers, like mm-hmm. this list changes, right? It's it's going to be rockers, hearts. Yeah, but it, it, yeah, it, yeah. So that, that's if you're doing yeah. a pure work rate tag team. Oh, God, at that like, point, you can put the Busters up there. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Busters, rockers, <laughs> hearts, even the Rujos, because the Rujos, were, Rujos, yeah, Rujos were great at making comedy matches look legit. So no, I. But think... if we're ranking all t- just like the whole tag team package, okay, the best WF run. It's demolition. Yeah. Okay. There's no doubt. It's demolition. Okay. I will. I'll concede again because, you know. Well, I'm not even convinced. It's not a concession. I, I don't know. I'm torn on the heart on the hearts versus the rockers, too. Like, no, because you make a good point, though, about like their class. It, it also has to do with like who they feuded with from times at times and like who they were. I mean, like just the house, show, the house show circuit in 88 was like rockers and busters the whole time. I mean, those are they have a great that's matches. Gotta be, that's got to be a friggin' match of the night. If you're going to a house show, I bet you almost every time well, they have a good stuff with the Rougeaus on the house shows, too. Yeah, but I don't, so, don't want to discount the hearts because there are stretches like the rockers in like 90 are not good. I mean, like, you know, they're pretty yeah. much forgotten until that. You know, they do the power and glory thing, which is almost to write Sean off for a bit. And then right. that match you mentioned, the, the phantom t- title change. Beyond that, their 90s kind of, and I guess they get the powers of hand match, but um, but they bounce back hard in 91. Like they're really good in 91. Right. That's what I'm saying is 91, yeah. even though it's driving towards the split, it's still a great 91. Like they they made like matches with the Nasty Boys look good. They made matches mm-hmm. with uh, the Beverly Brothers look good. I mean, like they, they pulled out some good matches. They had, I think, a match against LOD. Right. I think that was like one of the first like, Yes, that's on one of the costume up. tapes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that um I would probably say like quality of matches. I think you probably put the heart the hearts underneath the, the heart foundation underneath right. them. The hearts have the title reigns and the bigger yeah. angles, right? Because they have yeah. they have Danny Davis. Mm-hmm. They got they're involved with Savage and Honky, which I don't want to dis I wanted to mention that. I don't want to discount that, right? They're right. a big part. They got the but I feel like a lot of their best stuff is Brett Solo shit. Like you know, Brett and Savage, and then Brett's a solo in yeah. 88 with bad news. Yeah, um, and then, and the fact that they kind of, like, once the Mega Powers form and they kind of shift away, they, like, immediately shift to, like, the title shit with, like, Andre and, and right. Ted DiBiase, and then it's the Twin Towers. It's like, they never really have, like, that big blow-off with, like, the Mega Powers, which is, like... Right, they should have had that, right? Mega Powers is our Yeah, yeah so that kind of kills them, and then... Their yeah, 90 right. reign is forgettable. I, I mean, it's they had the fun match with Demolition at SummerSlam, which is good. The two out of three. Yeah. And then but then the whole, that whole fall, they're almost forgotten. Like, like you said, they're saddled with the Rhythm and Blues. Yeah. And then and the then, Nasties out of I'm nowhere. Trying, I'm trying to think who else they're they're stuck with somebody else too, which is just boring as all get out. That oh, the, um yeah, they fight. Who do they fight in early '90? Well, Brett's already like a singles. Does he fight like Undertaker or something in MSG? Oh no, maybe that's yeah. Bulldog. Like. I feel like he has like a singles. No, he's got that match against the Undertaker with it. It's the one like the Undertaker loves that match. That's what it is. Like, yeah, he yeah, gets yeah, to yeah. wrestle him like because he wrestled the Undertaker, and it's like he got to actually wrestle him and do stuff that he did when he was, you know, Mark Callis. Uh, well, let me look real quick because I have uh, my MSG stuff from PTB. So, all right. So uh, let's look at after the title win at, at SummerSlam, and then we'll then we'll make a final decision. Yeah. So after SummerSlam at MSG, um. They're not even in, in September. They're not there. Mm. It's it's Warrior and LOD versus Demolition. So like yeah. as already they're behind LOD. Yeah. They're not on the uh, oh the October they have a two star match with Rhythm and Blues. Mm. Um, Survivor Series they're in the Taker match with Dusty. They do not do much. Well, Brett's again it's Brett Solo right as a team Brett's, and Brett's at, Brett, Brett lasts to the end, but Jim Neidhart gets knocked out fast. Yep. November you know? ninety MSG there. Brett Solo gets Barbarian. December, I don't think they're even at there. It's Rockers, Power, and Glory have a three-star match. Mm. January, um, yeah, they're not there either. They're not in January. I mean, my guess is before they win the title. March, they fight Quake and Bravo, and that was okay. 
Yeah, but that's like a put together tag team. It's not really. Right. Um, I think it's the Rockers. I, I mean, that yeah, look, yeah. that total rain is nothing. I'll say the I'll say the last thing about this. I'll say is uh, I having gone back and watched eighty eight and eighty nine. All you every friggin' event center promo is about how Jimmy Hart screwed them out of twenty percent of their contract, and he knows all their secrets. And right. it's just, they're never going up against anybody good. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's crazy to say because I think there are people that had the Hearts number one on their GWE list, but. Again, like I think those top three are real tough. Like I, I could see the argument anyway. I think we could reframe this easily to say the Hearts are the top team, like if we really wanted to. Um, but it's really hard to judge a tag team when you know that like one of the guys is could be on a Mount Rushmore or yeah. single. But I mean, like, and I, and that's actually both the Rockers and the Hart Foundation because. You literally have two of the greatest singles wrestlers of yeah. a generation in that tag team, but Marty so... would be number three though, <laughs> and then Anvil four, right? I mean, if you're yeah. ranking the four of them, yeah, I think, um, yeah, yeah, I, I think again, you're we're splitting hairs, but this, I, I think, coming that's in, quality. I would have assumed that's a quality like list right there. I'm not gonna, I would never give in to not having Demolition as the number one team. I mean, they're they're probably my favorite team of all time, and yeah. I mean, I have gone on record that i put them above the road warriors even though they're supposedly yeah. a road warrior knockoff which i find highly insulting yeah, but, you know. yeah so i i think i think that if you're nitpicking here you could argue heart that top three mm -hmm. and then maybe the bulldogs brain busters i think i think is depends on what you prefer that one peak year or kind of the more memorable longer run um with everything the bulldogs had going on so there's our list uh for those that are just listening our D tier was Conquistadors. Or we'll say Bolsheviks at the bottom, then Conquistadors. C tier is the Young Stallions and the Rougeaus. The B tier is the Powers of Pain and then the Brain Busters. The A tier is the British Bulldogs and the Har Foundation. And our S tier is the Rockers and Demolition. So I want to thank you for checking out this section of Canoso. Continue to listen to hear the rest of the show about Survivor Series 1988 and everything else we have to offer here at Northside Connection. Uh, YouTube, we have a lot of video content. You can subscribe to us there and any podcast app to hear the audio stuff as well. So check all of that out. That's Keithy. I'm JT. We're out. And here comes the smasher, the